G'day and welcome to the Inner Chief Podcast and our summer series of sport and elite performance. Through the Christmas and New Year break, we are going to bring to you the very best episodes we have ever had from elite sporting legends and tie in our most popular minisodes on the same theme. I'm your host, Greg Layton, and I believe that the business world is getting faster, more complex, and harder than ever. In this environment, if you want to get promoted faster, earn respect, be listened to, and build a bulletproof track record of results, then learning from the masters and applying the strategies used when the stakes are high and the competition is fierce is critical. Every week this summer, I'm going to bring you an interview with a legend of sport and a short mini-sode from my experience in these most challenging environments. My goal is to equip you to bring your dreams to life in 2020. And Chief, there will be just a few of you thinking that you're ready to really take your game to a new level. If that's you, the Chief Maker Academy is launched and operating. We've got members in there taking their game to a whole new level. I've taken the most powerful strategies and tools that I coach directly to CEOs and executives, and I've turned them into a suite of powerful courses. This took me 18 months to design and build in over a decade to work out what to put in those courses in the first place. For Christmas, I'm giving you a $200 gift voucher. If you type in LEGACY, that's L-E-G-A-C-Y, as a coupon code in the checkout, you'll get $200 off. Righto, Chief. I hope you look forward and enjoy our summer series of 2020. Let's jump into this week's killer episode. In this episode, we're going to be talking about our part two on confidence. In episode 37, we talked all about some of the blockers of confidence. And in this episode, we're going to deep dive into around about seven of the biggest boosters. These are confidence boosters that will take your game to a whole new level. Before I dive into what they are, though, I want to talk a bit about why you might be suffering a little bit of lower confidence. It starts out with perhaps when you were young, you had this real incredible confidence that you could just go back to again and again and again. In order to understand why you might have lost that confidence, you've got to look at the pattern of your life when you were confident as a, you know, as a young adult or something like that. The truth is back then, you operated mostly on your own. You weren't responsible for large groups of people. Stakeholder management wasn't so difficult. You operated mainly independently on low complexity activities. These were things that were easy to understand. They were fairly logical in progression. You know, so one plus one equals two, or even quite a complex type of computation was, was really quite easy. And the answer ended up being fairly straightforward. As a result of that and perhaps other activities in your life, you spent a lot of time in flow. You you really did harness the best parts of your brain for a lot of time. There was much lower stress. And the important thing to understand here is the neuroscience that goes with that. You know, when you're stressful, there's a whole range of really negative biochemicals that drive into your brain and into your bloodstream, and over time, they can sort of wear you down. But when you're in flow, the endorphins, uh, these are things like serotonin, adrenaline, oxytocin, and the right brainwaves, what we call our alpha and gamma brainwaves, they are on fire. And this is the thing, the more you are in confidence, or what I'll refer to today as operating in flow you're really starting to release the good biochemicals into the body. And these have the ability to stay in the bloodstream for more than just an hour or two. Sometimes they can last more than a day. And that's the thing. Perhaps when you were younger, you spent a lot more time in flow. And when I work with athletes that have been operating in a professional environment for an entire career, and all of a sudden they leave, one of the things that we talk about is making sure they spend some more time in flow like every single day, because they've spent an entire career of constantly being in flow, physically and mentally thriving. Whereas most executives spend an enormous amount of time trying to deal with highly complex, confusing, overwhelming kind of situations. So the things we're going to talk about today are all designed to help you get in flow and build that confidence, right? We want these boosting type activities to really drive you to another level. The thing is, and never ever forget this, if you are lacking confidence, people can see it. You look like you've probably gone as far as you can for the moment and you need development before promotion. 
those people that are confident, that are comfortable in their own skin when they're operating, they look like they are ready to be promoted and they generally are. Now, the kind of activities I'm talking about where you want to improve confidence, these are key meetings, one-to-ones, team meetings, presentations with important people. It might be sales presentations, board meeting presentations, any key presentation, conversations with difficult people in your team, difficult peers or difficult stakeholders, the confidence when you're making big, challenging, complex decisions, because I know that is one of the hardest things in the world, because when you're not confident, you actually lose that ability to be bold and courageous and make that decision with some conviction. So we want to bring back the confidence in your decisions and then the confidence to take on big roles and big projects so you can really, really shine and build that track record and build your reputation so you can rise up to the next level within your organization and be valuable. So I'm going to talk through around about seven different ways right now in order to have this boost of confidence that takes your game to that whole new level. The very first one is mindset, and mindset drives your attention. It drives what you're is seeking to get out of an interaction with something. As an example, a mindset is often heard through something that sounds like a mantra. Seek first to understand, then be understood. And I had a client a while back who was going into meetings with the sole intention, really, at an unconscious level, to be heard, to be understood. But the first thing that was missing was their ability to seek to understand. And seeking first to understand slows things down and changes the attention. Another thing that you can do is a mindset that maybe you take to work every day. And that is, I'm going to be my greatest self. When I'm at work, I'm going to be my very, very best. And when you bring these mindsets... They raise your standard. They also almost rise you up physiologically. They can slow the heart rate. They can get the breathing pattern right that goes with it. And all of a sudden, something as a simple mindset or a mantra can change everything about your performance. The thing to remember here is that you are already carrying a mindset into every activity you take. And that mindset is probably operating very unconsciously out of your normal attention. And it's important to actually find out what that mindset is and transform it. Or just optimize it in a way that it's very congruent and optimal for the activity you are about to undertake. The next point is around fear. Fear of what people might think of you. Fear of failure. And these are unbelievably common particularly in the business world where there's so many relationships and the more you rise up, the more you're on show. You know, and in particular in Australia, we have the tall poppy syndrome and people can be actually really worried about what people might think of them because they're sticking their head up to have a real go. So this fear of what people think of you, this fear of failure, this fear of sticking your head up above the ground so someone else can have a shot at you, that plays a huge role in confidence. And the most powerful way of dealing with fears is to reframe them. This reframe can happen in an instant. So if you are worried about failure, I'm not going to die wondering. People will remember me because I am bold and I am courageous. Failure is temporary. Glory lasts forever. Any of these little reframes can have an enormous impact on what is going on in your brain. And if you've got a fear perspective or a fear frame going on in your head, remember what it's doing to you biochemically. Now you're getting the negative hormones being released in your body. And these can rack the body and they can actually last for long periods of time. So the very first thing you've got to do is just look at the fear, face it, and then reframe it into something that's positive and aspirational that aligns to what you're trying to achieve in your business. The third approach is flow, and I mean getting in flow more often. As I said, when you're younger, you're probably in flow a lot more often. And so we want to bring that back. Because the more you're in flow, the more the alpha and gamma waves are firing in your head, the more those fantastic endorphins being released into your body, which improves you physically and mentally. And here's the thing. You are now getting your brain to operate almost in its highest functioning state. This means you're bringing the greatest resourcefulness of your entire being to the problems that are going on in your work. 
one of my great mentors, he used to be a fantastic rock climber. And whenever he had a problem at work, what he would do is he'd write down the problem, then he'd leave it and go and do rock climbing for about an hour with his mates and really push himself to the limits of his ability that required full flow. And then he'd come back to work and guess what? The problem was generally solved in his head. This is the thing. When you're in flow, the state that you bring tends to imprint on some of the problems you've got. And then all of a sudden they get solved. So the more you can be in flow through playing musical instruments, playing sport, going for a run, going for a ride, anything that requires both physical and mental full attention, this is the kind of thing we really want to have more and more in your work. On top of that, when we do our work, let's make sure we give it our full attention. So let's not be multitasking. If you've got to do a report, Shut down every other application on your computer and get it done right. Give it the right amount of attention and flow so you knock it out of the park and deliver something that is very, very high quality and you're utilizing the best parts of your brain. This takes me to the fourth one, which is somewhat related. This is about picking key performances for putting on your game face. Now, in the business world, we sort of feel like we're performing all the time. But what I like to do is get people to pick their key performances every week. And when they get to those performance, dial up their preparation, dial up everything. So when they walk into the moment, they put on their game face. And game face means in flow. It doesn't mean angry face. It means in flow. It means absolutely getting ready to knock this particular point out of the park. So that's number four. Pick your key big moments and put on your game face. Number five is using rehearsal and scenario modeling in your preparation. So if you have a big decision to make or a big presentation or something that's going to go down, it might well be a negotiation, you do some advanced rehearsal. You get people in the room who can play out the different characters, maybe you film it, and you get yourself better and better and better. Now, this is exactly what an orchestra does in preparation for a big performance, or it's exactly what an elite sporting team does in the week leading up to a big game. They do all sorts of rehearsal. They get themselves perfect. So it's in the muscle memory of what's going to happen. And in an elite sporting environment, they pick all sorts of weird and different scenarios. Now, most of the time they train that. It doesn't even happen on game day, but they're ready for it. And because they're ready for it, they're more comfortable. They're more, you know, they can actually calm down on the field and actually be ready for the thing that's going to come their way. The beautiful side benefit of rehearsal and scenario modeling is it fine tunes your technical ability so that you have more confidence in your ability to perform the tasks that will stitch together the entire game plan. And when those technical abilities are right in the muscle memory in all the different scenarios, then your confidence soars. So do as much rehearsal, as much scenario modeling as you possibly can because that will really drive bulletproof confidence. The sixth point is game plan. And this in many ways comes before the rehearsal and scenario modeling, because what we're talking about here is working out the strategy that's going to work for you. So we might be talking about the way you might lay out a presentation. We might be talking about the way you might phrase something or frame something in a meeting. This is your game plan, and it's gotta be really closely linked to your mindset, the goal that you're trying to achieve in a particular scenario, but you've got to really do some work on it. As an example, how often do you go into a big meeting knowing your game plan? That is, you consider the outcome, what you want people to think, feel, and do when they leave, and then all the messages and the framing you're going to deliver those well-prepared and defined in advance. That is having a game plan. And I know very few people that do that, but when you do, you really go in with a sense of calm, composure, and presence, because you know what's going to go down, and most of the other people in the room don't. So if you want to really drive that confidence right up and give it a big boost, work on your game plan in advance of key moments. The last point is around your mental frameworks. Your mental frameworks allow you to make really smart decisions that you can be confident in. So the more mental models that you have in your head that help you make a key decision, the better. As an example, you might use Porter's change methodology, or you might use a strategic planning process, or you might use a little five-step process for giving and receiving feedback. 
These little frameworks help you be more confident in your process because the more you do them, the more you get better at them, the more familiar you are with them, the more they're in your muscle memory. When it comes to big decisions, I can't recommend highly enough basing them on some really solid frameworks. And then there's two other things that I always put in when making a big decision. And I've learned this off countless CEOs that do this every single time. Seek good counsel. Call someone up you trust who thinks differently to you, who is independent from your organization or where you are, and get their counsel. Once you've got one person's counsel, get a second and a third. Because what you want is the collective wisdom of four or five people coming into a particular decision. And when four and five people's greatness is brought together on a decision, you can certainly be way more confident in the quality of that decision. The second point I want to make then in big complex decisions is just assessing risk. Richard Branson said he never made a business decision he could lose on. So really look at your risk matrix and ask yourself, how can I increase the upside and decrease the downside? So every time you're going to talk about a big decision, every time you're going to present it, every time you're going to talk to someone, bring those two elements to it. Increase the upside, decrease the downside as much as you possibly can because that will mean you can be far more confident that the decision you're going to make is going to be more beneficial, have the better consequences for the business and for you personally. Righto, Chiefs, that is the seven big boosters of flow. Mindset, deal with fear, reframe it, get in flow more often, put on your game face, do better rehearsal and scenario modeling, really work on your game plan from the outset and have the right frameworks around you when you're making key big decisions. That's it for me this week. Get out there and knock it out of the park. Righto Chiefs, you've been listening to the Inner Chief Podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe and I'd love it if you could leave a review so others can benefit from your thoughts on the show. Remember, if you're after a copy of my book, then just search for it on Amazon or drop into a Target store around Australia. Remember, I put all the resources, quotes and links into a detailed summary on the Chief Maker website. And if you've got any queries or would like to nominate a CEO of unquestionable integrity, then please drop me an email at info at chiefmaker.com.au. I'm Greg Layton and remember to stay epic.